Okay, we're going to take a look at what's going to happen this weekend in Week 11 NFL action. A lot of stuff going on. It is Tuesday, so we are missing information that we will benefit from as we learn, mostly injuries. And it's not just key players like uh, the ones you talk about all the time, quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. A lot of comes a lot of the injuries come down to your linemen, missing linemen here, left tackle, right tackle, defensive back. It's you know, these are also very important players that we need to put a little more focus on. On Thursday, Washington Phil goes to Philadelphia. Now this is the division game. And Washington is the upstart team this year, of course. Seven and three on the season straight up. Philadelphia's seven and two. That's because of the bye week issue. Uh, this game opened Philadelphia 3, 49 and a half. We're looking at 49s and we're looking at money has come in on Philadelphia 3 and a half. Now, when you look at these two teams, I mean, you might, the pedigree, obviously, is Philadelphia. They were in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. They've got hurts and um, they're playing pretty well right now, but. You can't discount Washington. I mean, they had a tough game last week. They lose that game to Pittsburgh. But, you know, Pittsburgh, that was a they, – they played well. They played well. I thought Pittsburgh should have won it maybe a little bit easier than they did. But um, they played well in the game. And they do have a good coaching staff, good ownership, it appears. And uh, this team is uh, dangerous. Uh, Daniels is definitely, he, I know he wasn't picked number one as the number one quarterback, but he's definitely the best of the rookie group coming into the season. Now we go to Green Bay at Chicago. Now here's an interesting game. Uh, they're all interesting to a degree, but Green Bay, six and 40 and a half. We see some 41s. You're going to have weather. It looks like weather here. Green Bay six and three, Chicago's four and five. Now, if you recall, Green Bay was home to the Lions, and the Lions absolutely crushed them. But last week, Chicago was a favorite over the Patriots, and the Patriots crushed them. And the Patriots are not very good. They're a pretty bad team. So what the hell is going on with the Chicago Bears? They do have the number one draft choice in Williams. They just fired uh, their head, the uh, offensive coordinator uh, for the Bears. And um, I think this is a shit show in Chicago. Did they give up? You know, the players don't give up because they're playing for their jobs. So you can't really say that. But the attitude and the enthusiasm in the clubhouse uh, – locker room around the team changes green bay six on the road at chicago that you're not going to see that kind of number the division game rivalry probably a hundred games between these two teams over the years i like green bay but i can't lay that number on the road uh if you're into teasers that might be a teaser play uh cleveland goes to new orleans now new orleans picked off Atlanta last week. They beat them. Cleveland's coming off the bye. You really don't know what the hell you're going to get from Cleveland. I mean, I know Watson's gone. You have Jameis Winston, a quarterback. But the last time they went out, that they had that game, the first game when he comes back, he won. Then last week they played, play, the last week they played, they looked absolutely terrible. Now they had the bye week. Now they're ready to go into New Orleans. Saints had some injuries. They had lost a bunch of games in a row. They did beat Atlanta, which was a division game. Cleveland's two and seven, and the Saints are three and seven. So you're really not talking about quality stuff here. But somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to cover. We're looking at uh, the Saints one and forty-four and a half, and that's about what it opened. Eh, no, there was a little bit more money. There was actually money. A bigger price on the Saints opening this up. You could have found a two, two and a half. So the money has come in on Cleveland. That's probably because they're coming off the buy. 
so they're rested. And this is kind of a revenge game because Jameis Winston did play for the Saints before he went to Cleveland. I'm not going to say much about this at this moment. We did the next game. I had the Rams Monday night against Miami. I mean, I'm on a pretty good run right now. I I was 24 and 10 going into that game. So I'm 24 and 11. That's a pretty good run. But the Rams just, whew, that was a horrible, horrible performance. I thought I had the better coach. I thought I had the better quarterback. I th- thought I had the healthier wide receivers because Tua was a little banged up with the wrist and everything. And the game was, they were never in it. Five field goals, never go, never scored a touchdown. It was it was just a walk in the park for Miami, and uh, that that was unbelievable to watch that. The Rams four and a half on the road at New England Patriots, who just beat Chicago, which really we can't give them a lot of credit for that. The totals forty four and a half. Uh, I'm going to say um, you got to give the New England a little bit of a bump here because they're playing enthusiastically young uh, team playing for their jobs, new, new regime there. This isn't the old Patriots. There's no Belichick Brady stuff, but uh, I don't know what the Rams are. They're going to could, could run into some weather here. The Rams aren't really used to that uh, playing on the West coast, indoor stadium stuff, stuff like that. I favored, I favored new England, but it, you know, we're probably never going to see it. But if, if I could get six with New England, I'd probably bet them. Baltimore at Pittsburgh is one of the marquee games of the week. Huge game. Now, these two teams, this is a division game. We've got a history in this that goes way back. They play all the time, at least twice a year. Baltimore at Pittsburgh. Baltimore 3, 48. That's what the number is I'm looking at right now. Uh, this is a big dog series. Pittsburgh's coming to play. They're not going to give this up. They know how to defend L- Lamar, and Lamar's easy, not easy to defend. But when you play him a couple times a year, you can get, uh, you can figure out how to do it. Tom is a good coach. Not then Harbaugh's a good coach too. Um, so this is this is a hell of a game, a hell of a game to watch, hell of a game to bet. Maybe a lot of in-game action. Uh, I favor the dog. I don't know that you'll ever see four. It would be a nice number to get, but right now it's three forty-eight. Baltimore is the favorite on the road at Pittsburgh. That's hard to find. I mean, you don't usually see Pittsburgh as a home underdog, but you have it here. Next game, Vegas and Miami. And we just said Miami just went into the Rams and beat the Rams. Vegas coming off the bye. They didn't play last week. Miami 7.5-44. And um, I, don't, I don't know. Can Vegas put together a game? Pretty bad football team. They're both bad, actually. Miami 3-6. and six, But they're coming off the victory. And that's, that's big. That could give them the momentum. I mean, they are playing the AFC East. And there's not much going on in the AFC East except for the Bills. So um, that's that's where we're at here. Go to the next game, Jacksonville, who's another dumpster fire. Two and eight on the season, going to Detroit, eight and one. And here you got the Detroit 13, a 13 point favorite. That's right. And 47 and a half is the total. Uh, Jacksonville has got to dump their coach. They got to change. Do something. I mean, they got they're gonna mess. They're down to playing Mac Jones, which you know it's because of the Lawrence injuries. Um, I I don't know. I can't I can't I can't make any heads or tails in this game. Minnesota, Tennessee. Minnesota should have won by a lot last week. They ran up and down the field, just made mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. They didn't cover. They won. They're seven and two on the season. Ten and C is another dumpster fire. Two and seven. They played a little bit better in times last week. It wasn't exactly terrible. Um, we're looking at uh, Minnesota five and a half, six and thirty nine. You might be looking at an under here. It's a, a, yeah, I could see that. 
I could see an under. I don't see how Tennessee is going to put up many, many points against this team. The Colts. No oh boy, this is another one. At the Jets, four and six team against a three and seven team. You got two old quarterbacks playing in this game. You got Flacco for the Colts, and of course for the Jets you have Aaron Rodgers. Um, Rodgers is playing a little bit better than Flacco this year. Flacco, this is not the Flacco we saw last year with Cleveland. Uh, and he's actually playing pretty damn yeah, bad, actually. And um, so we look at the Jets, three and a half or four, 43 and a half. And um, I, I don't know. But, uh, let me see here. Hold on a second. Interruption there. Um, I would probably favor the Jets except for one thing. Since they fired Sala, who was a hell of a defensive coach. I know he was the head coach of the Jets, but he had a lot of influence on the defense. And, and uh, even though they weren't doing much offensively under him, their defense always played tough. But look at what happened last week. I mean, Arizona scored 31 points, and they didn't, they didn't even play the fourth quarter. So, I mean, they gave up 31 points to Arizona in three quarters. Uh, Flacco might have a good game, and, and, and they have they got enough talent. I'd, if I played the game, I'd probably be on the dog here, taking, especially if I could get four just for the hell of it. I mean, shot, it, it's a number play, really. You got two teams that are really bad. Um, yeah, that's probably what I would do. Next game's interesting. Seattle, San Francisco. Now, Seattle coming off the bye, they're getting six and a half points here. 49 and a half is the total. San Francisco's got some players back, but, you know, they're not really playing San Francisco ball. They're just careless. They're making mistakes. Their special teams aren't really playing well. This is, team is a little bit, this has slipped a little bit. Now, I know they were in the Super Bowl a couple times the last few years. Last year, obviously, lost to Kansas City. But I'd be, I think I'd be looking at Seattle here. The division game, huge game. They're four and five on the season. San Francisco's five and four. Uh, we got, you know, it is what it is. You look at it, they're not that much different. Uh, yes, um, I, I can see why they're favored, but taking six and a half or seven, and actually I do see a seven. You got you get, If you can get a full seven, even well, six and a half, maybe even money when you're not playing any juice, I could see that. Atlanta at Denver. Now, Atlanta lost last week to the Saints division game. Denver, oh, man, they played their asses off at Kansas City. They should have won the game. Had the blocked field goal at the end. That's why they they lost. And San Francisco, or Kansas City walks away with the victory. Denver's playing some good ball. They're a two-point favorite in this game over Atlanta. And the total is 43 and a half. 44, you can see both. Um, road game for Atlanta, off a division, off a win, off a, a loss. Denver lost also. I favor Denver. I'm not going to lay, you know, this is the kind of game where I would say, okay, I'm, I favor Denver. You're look, probably looking at numbers, that were probably one, two, one and a, two and a half. I probably play Denver with the money line here. That's that's probably the way I'd look at this. I like the way Knicks is playing. They're well coached. They play hard defense. They're tough. Atlanta's a little bit soft. They don't put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Knicks should be able to do what he wants to do. And uh, Denver's defense is pretty rough. Um, yeah, I think Denver's the right side here. Uh, Kansas City at Buffalo. This is a big another. We got some. We got some marquee games uh, next this this coming week. Kansas City at Buffalo. This is, I mean, what a history between these two and. Buffalo has a tough time beating these guys. I'll tell you, Buffalo's favored. They're at home. Open two and a half. It's down to one and a half. 45 and a half. 
But Kansas City is not playing well. I know they're nine and zero, but man, they play close to the best. It just, and they should have lost last week. Andy Reid laid it on the line to the team. He is not happy with how careless they are and how non-focused they are. You might see an upgrade in focus here from Kansas City because Andy was not happy with the way they've been playing. And like I said, they should have lost that game. Coaching-wise, you know you got the best coaches on Kansas City. Quarterback, okay, let's call it even. Um, yeah, it's this is a tough game. I mean, if I don't know what you're going to get here game time, but if you could get two and a half or three with Kansas City, oh my goodness, you'd have to take them. You have to take them. I know it's on the road, but Kansas City good. They're nine zero. Buffalo's eight and two. And uh, you just can't give them full a full uh, field goal if that happens. If it's if it if you're not getting the value in the number, I'd probably pass it. Uh, that's probably how I'd look at it. This is do or die here for Cincinnati. I don't know. I think I don't know if they still have hope at four and six. You still got uh, seven more games to go to make the playoffs. Obviously. The, you're looking at wild card possibilities. This is an AFC game. It's not a division game. The Chargers are six and three, playing well under Harbaugh. Cincinnati is uh, not as well coached as the Chargers, but offensively they have a lot of skill. They can really move the ball, score points. Chargers are one and a half. It's been one and a half since. Pretty much, I see this year too early, but one and a half's the number. Chargers never get much home field advantage, but um, <clears throat> cross country trip for Cincinnati. Joe Burrow, Herbert, this good game, very good game. Um, I probably look at the total, providing yeah, yeah, you probably look at the total here. Houston at Dallas. Oh, there's the Dallas is a dumpster fire. This is the Jerry Jones led Dallas Cowboys who have messed up just about everything this year. Three and six on the year. They're not going anywhere. Dax having season under ending surgery. They can't run the ball. But Houston is got we got regression from Stroud. They took the big lead over. Detroit last week, and then the second half they didn't score a point, and they lost the game. Now, we know Detroit's good, but to not be able to score a point in the second half, they've had wide receiver issues. They have the one wide receiver out for the year. The other guy's been week to week, and he didn't play again last week. And Stroud is hitting the uh, sophomore slump. He's, but the weapons make a difference. And the offensive line issues that they have. So you're looking at uh, Houston at Dallas, a seven point, seven and a half point favorite, 42 and a half. Ooh, I don't know about that. That's, um, I'm not laying it, but that's what we got going on this week. Uh, we got some big plays up on the site. Um, and I'm looking for a good week. We are 20. We went into the Monday night game 24 and 10 on a 24 and 10 run. We did lose with the Rams. Sorry about that. That was a bad call on my part. But so that's 24 and 11. The last 35 plays, which isn't bad. And we got some big plays on the website. And we're going to have some big plays for sale. And I expect we're going to have a real good week. That's it for today.